We have a new Monado art now. It's both one of the most useful and powerful ones in the game, and also one of the most confusing, and a lot of people never really get to grips with it. And this can be very frustrating, because it's often it's one of the keys to defeating a lot of the higher level side quest boss bosses, and being able to progress smoothly in the main storyline. The game gave us quite a bulk of information there, and I think that's one of the reasons people get easily confused. I know the first time I saw it, I had no idea. The moment the tutorial pages closed, I had no idea what I was doing or what it had said. Basically, part of our being able to see the future is we now get warnings in battle. Some of the things that are going to happen in battle, we can use the shield against. When the bar appears at the top warning us about the future, it will have the name of the art that's going to be used by the monster, the person it's going to hit, the amount of damage it's going to do, and the time we've got until it hits. If the name of the attack is in white, we can use our new shield, and the new shield has the effect of completely mitigating the attack. Even if it's going to do several thousand damage over what your normal health limit would be, it will just stop it dead. It's a really, really powerful, useful new skill. However, if the art isn't red, we can still do something about it. Obviously, because we know what's going to happen, we can change what we're doing and say try and pick up some aggro or drop aggro, heal people, that kind of thing, or get into position to pick someone up if we know they're going to go down regardless. The spider appears to be twerking it. That's, ugh. That's kind of disturbing, I don't know how to make it stop. Anyway, another thing we can do is we can run up to a party member spend a chunk of the blue gauge in the top left corner and we can choose an attack on their behalf from their battle palette and hopefully they will have something we can use that will change or mitigate what's going to happen this fight it really isn't that different from just a standard fight against a tough enemy the only difference is we have now been introduced to the shield and if you take too long more waves of spiders spawn but that's not going to be an issue this time round. You can see them scuttling around the edges, but the moment we kill the boss, everything else clears in this area as well. Right, you're a lifesaver. Backlash! Looks like the Monado works on more than just Mekon. I gotta say, that's pretty awesome. Ryan, I just realized something. Huh? The future I see, it isn't set. I think it's more like a warning. A warning? Yeah. A warning about what will happen. What will happen if I don't do anything? Or if I can't do anything? So I can use this power to change the future. And that's exactly what I intend to do. You've got my vote. And if you really can do that, I think Fiora would have liked it too. Yeah. Right, let's get moving. We're nearly at the Bionis knee. No matter how many times I see this, I never get used to it. I'm 
the other side of those clouds. Yep. It's our enemy. Maconis. Mm. Our enemy. If we just came up the Bionis shin, then this must be its kneecap, right? Yep. Which means Colony 6 is up ahead. Looks like we can climb up there. Great. I love a good climb. The view of the world is persistent. And any time you're outside, you can look around and see all the different parts of the Bionis and Maconis. And what they actually did during development is they had scale models made of the two in the pose that they are in in the game. And they used it to determine when you were standing on a particular point what you could actually see. And they use that to build the environment. So there's parts where we've stood and you can actually look across and you can see... You can see up the Bionis, you can see its arm stretched overhead. There's parts where you can look across and you can see the Maconis and it is to scale. And I, I'm really jealous that, that someone out there has those models. I would love just to have a couple of scale models of two giant things hitting each other. I'd never be able to explain it to guests, but it, it would still be really cool to have. They did actually release special editions with the game, but in England the only one we got was a set that came with a special red controller. I'm not a big fan of the Wii Classic controller. This game actually works quite nicely with the nunchuck and normal Wiimote. I'm also a bit biased because I bought the special edition of Skyward Sword and I have the Legend of Zelda Wiimote. So it's all gold and got the Triforce on. I am... I am quite geeky when it comes to my collectibles, but the Xenoblade Chronicles one just wasn't any good. I guess it's because it was a limited release, but I'm still very surprised they didn't do one with miniatures of some kind. Oh, Shulk! Look over there! Smoke? Maybe someone's got a fire going. Hope they're cooking up something good. It's hardly a good spot for a barbecue. Come on, let's take a look. Our ability to tell the future now affects items that we pick up. 
as we've seen, uh, some of the quests we're given by people is to find things, and some of them are located as the blue collectibles on the floor. But each A, the collectibles aren't randomly generated, they're in the same spots each time, but they're not always the same thing. If I remember correctly, each blue glowy can be one of eight items, and there's a chance allocated to each item for it to appear, and some are quite hard to come by. Our new ability just means that if we collect something that's going to be necessary for a quest later on, we don't accidentally sell it or do something with it. This is especially useful for some of the items that... There's, there's some things that you'll be lucky to get like one in the game without deliberately running over hundreds of collectible spots. Someone's left a buggy out here. That's strange. Who would just abandon a buggy in this place? And it's pretty new. Is it brand new? Not brand new, but it's in very good condition. You wouldn't just abandon it. So, what did happen to the driver? There's a boy! He's being attacked by monsters! You saw it happening? Where? I don't know. But it was near some water. Near water? But what made you have a vision all of a sudden? Maybe it was triggered by touching the buggy. Well, we'd better find him. Let's search everywhere around here where there's water. Okay. is one of the places that tends to really hit people on how open and gorgeously designed the game is. It takes so long if you want to run around the whole thing. And all of it's packed with detail and unique characteristics. But for now, we need to save a dipshit. I can't power. Oh, oh, eat this! Wait, go! Get out of here! Leave these guys to us! Uh, okay! Let's do this! Ready when you are! Let's focus our efforts! I'm on it! Yay! Okay, we have never ever seen these guys angry at anything or try and kill anyone. And if it wasn't plot mandated, I would just let them trample him to death because he has obviously done something to them. Look, they've got little tufty sides. And, and they lie down if you pet them too hard. That's what I'm doing, I'm petting them. I am not stabbing them in the arse unprovoked. I feel like such a bad person. A new ability doesn't just apply to bosses, it will apply in any normal fight as well. And I actually shielded for no reason. Because it's red, the shield doesn't do anything. 
but he lied down to go have a nap anyway. I think earlier on I said red arts instead of white, but it's only white arts that the shield works on. At some point I am planning to do a series of videos just explaining some of the mechanics, the levelling system, and show each person's individual kind of fight play style. But I haven't found a good lull in the plot to do it in yet. This is the Monado's power! Okay, it should work now. Great! You saved my skin. My buggy short-circuited. And then there were those monsters and... Well, thanks. I fixed the circuit, but it's out of ether. Change the cylinder and it will be as good as new. I think it's time for the introductions. I'm Ryan. He's Shulk. Pleased to meet you. Oh, hi. I'm Juju. Um... Where are you two heading? If you've got time, you should come back to our camp. Your camp? Yeah. It's not far. How about it? Let's take him up on the offer. I'm surprised there's a Homs camp here. But they might have some information. I suppose. Juju, can you tell us how to get there? Sure. If you go back to the oasis, you should see a tall stone post. Head there first. Then what? There's a small path in the woods next to the stone post. Just follow it down to our camp. Got it. Now, let's make a move. One of the things that's always really stood out to me about this game as well is you don't just come across vast horizontal stretches of land. There's a lot of depth and height to everything. You can drop down and things, you can climb up things, there's different levels, there's hidden caves, that kind of thing. It's not just big and broad for the sake of being big and broad. They really put a lot of effort into A, keeping keeping it in the shape of the Bionis and bearing that in mind at all times, but also trying to get a really natural, craggy appearance to every area. This is actually it from me for this update. I'll see you guys next time. You. Where have you been? <sighs> Juju! <laughs> Don't tell me you were. I've told you a thousand times. We're not ready to leave the camp yet. But I thought. Juju! Sorry, Sharla. That gear. You must be survivors from the Defense Force. Is Colony 6 okay? Did Gaddo make it? Hold on. What are you talking about? We've... we've come from Colony 9. Colony 9? They saved me from some monsters. This is Ryan and Shulk. Oh, so you're not from Colony 6. Thank you for helping Juju. I'm his sister, Sharla. I told them they could rest here, with us. Did you now? Well, all right. I suppose that's only fair. Did something happen to Colony 6? Actually, we're heading there ourselves. Colony 6 has been... Our home. It's been occupied by the Mekon. No. 
I'll tell you about it inside. Follow me. We had already fought off the Mekon a year ago, at the Battle of Sword Valley. It left us with a false sense of security. The Colony 6 Defense Force didn't even notice the approaching Mekon. By the time the air raid siren sounded, a swarm of Mekon had blackened the sky. They ate people and burned our buildings. Me and Juju dedicated ourselves to evacuating the children and elderly. I don't know what happened next. It's just like what happened to Colony 9. They attacked your colony as well? Yes. It's good that you managed to evacuate so many. We have a Tharon, the Colonel, to thank for that. Him and Gaddo. This Gaddo? He would have been my husband by now, if not for all this. <laughs> Cheer up, you two. Uh... We can't lose hope just yet. I'm certain Gaddo and the other soldiers are alive. They're still fighting. I can feel it. Um... Hmm? You're on your way to Colony 6, right? You bet. We're up for some revenge. I bet we can even get your colony back. There you go, showing off again. If anyone can do it, it's you two. Could... Um... Uh, could you take me with you to the colony? Juju! The people here need us! How many times do I have to tell you? But you heard, the Mekon attacked Colony 9. That means a load of them have left Colony 6 already. It has to. <sighs> Even if that's true. No, especially if it's true. We cannot expose the camp to any more danger. So, you don't care what happens to the people in the colony? How can you be so heartless? Are you that scared of the Mekon? Oi, kid! Ryan! You ought to know how Sharla feels. Watch your mouth and have some respect. I'll go and make dinner. Maybe I was too hard on him. Shulk? Ryan? You really remind me of Gaddo when you get angry. I, I do? Gaddo's taken care of us ever since we were young. I always saw him as a big brother, really. But he was more of a father to Juju. He'd call him kid whenever he told him off, just like you did. I don't think I'm ready to be someone's old man just yet. Wait, Shulk. Did it happen again? Yeah. You had another vision. No! Juju! <gasps> the buggy's gone! He's going to Colony 6 on his own! Stupid kid! We have to hurry. Something bad's gonna happen. What did you see? A deep valley. Everything's engulfed in flames. There's a black shadow. It kills Juju. Is it the Mekon with the metal face? Yeah. Where does it happen? Is it near Colony 6? I'm not sure. I think so. Let's get after him, Shulk. Hold on a second. 
What was all that about? I know you won't believe this, but Shulk can see the future. The future? That's not possible. That's what I thought too. I still can't explain this, but that vision I had will come true unless we stop it. So you're telling me Juju's in danger? Believe it or don't believe it, that's your call. But I wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for Shulk's visions. Juju. Oh, okay, I can't say I believe you. But what have I got to lose? I like the way you think. Charlotte, you're... What? No, nothing. Oh. What are you doing? Let's go and find Juju. When you talk like that, you sound just like Gaddo. That's how I know it's not worth arguing. What am I? Some kind of Gaddo substitute? That thing killed Charlotte too. I saw it in the vision. But I can't stop her coming with us. I don't know how I can protect her. But I have to do it. I will change the future.